It's a uh... Good evening, everyone, or whenever you're watching. Uh, we are so glad to have you here for this month's art class in February. We are creating a beautiful butterfly. Uh, I do think that's quite appropriate, Hannah, because some people are still working on their New Year's resolutions or figuring out how they want the year to work for them, so like a butterfly. Um, I have a couple of announcements to make. So the ANCAN art classes page is live on the website. We're very excited. So you'll be able to get information and kind of see when the classes are. So we're, we're good. We have a central location for that. The art gallery is up to date. If you look it over and you don't see yours, feel free to send it to me. Even if you only join in from recording, feel free to send it to me, Alexa at ANCAN.org. And second, and the last thing, Hannah, before we can get started. We have to tell our participants how much we bragged on them at Texas AYA because this program is not about me or you. Our participants make it the best thing ever. And we almost are reduced to tears every single time we talk about you. And we are just bragging on you, saying how amazing you are. And just, we really appreciate it. So Hannah, get us started tonight. Let's get in with a butterfly. Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. Oh, so, so AYA so is, oh, sure. Hannah, you go. Well, AYA, it stands for Adolescent and Young Adults, um, but typically when you talk about AYA, you're talking about cancers. So Adolescent Young Adult Cancer, so Oncology. So we went to a conference um, here in San Antonio this past weekend, and just like Alexa said, we bragged on you guys because we're so proud of you. <laughs> so we had so much fun talking about the art class, and so we hope to gain some traction from that. Um, so yes, yes, I'd love to talk about that later. But uh, let's get started on our butterflies. So we were talking earlier and I am gonna go through how to actually draw this butterfly, um, but we're not gonna get hung up on the details. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what sort of things to look at when you're when you're trying to draw the butterflies. Um, but again, we're not gonna go through, um, get hung up on the details. I want you guys to create your butterfly. Um, from scratch. Um, but if you absolutely want to do something like like draw a monarch butterfly, you can totally do that as well. Um, so let me get started with that. I'd like to share my screen with you. I have I found this really lovely butterfly guide. Hopefully y'all can see it. Y'all see it? It's telling, right? Yes, it is. Yay. Okay. Let's make it a little smaller. Okay. So as you can see, um, lots of different wing types. So you have some that are a little bit more droopy, especially that at the, at the very uh, top there. Um, they sort of hang downwards a little bit. Um, some of them hang, you know, a little bit uh, uh, kind of like this. I know you guys can't see me very much, but uh, it's kind of like, like this. And some a little bit like this, more upwards. I'll show these hand movements um, bigger whenever I stop sharing the screen. But feel free to take a picture of this on your phone. That way you sort of have it with you. Or if you, if you like a certain butterfly pattern, um, then feel free to, to take, that, take that screenshot or whatever you can so that you can have this. Um, I actually only just had to search up butterfly types and it gave me this entire list here. So that's all I did. So I'm going to stop my share real quick. Just a quick little overview of what we're going to need for our project. I have paper. So this is my mixed media paper. Um, this is actually like a nine by 12 inch, but whatever you have is perfectly fine. It's mixed media. Um, so I can put a little bit of water on it and it will be perfectly fine. Um, we're gonna be using watercolor pencils. So if you've never heard of watercolor pencils, so this right here. So what, you're, what, what you'll do is you'll, you'll color with them in the same way that you color with colored pencils, except that whenever we put water on it, it's gonna blend together. So it'll blend together as if it was actually watercolor. So there's a method to using it. So I, I will go over that method with you guys afterwards. They're super fun to use. Um, if you don't have watercolor pencils, so that's absolutely fine. And in fact, I have a few examples in which I got started with a few butterflies 
using different things. So this one right here, I use colored pencils. Um, and the, the process to use color pe color pencils is the same, the exact same that I'm going to be doing with the watercolor pencils, except you just won't be putting any water on it. That's it. Um, this one over here, not finished. I'm going to add some red onto it, but this one was made with markers. And then this one, I got started using just watercolor. So um, with this base of watercolor, I can put different colors on top with my smaller brushes. So I know that was a lot, okay? I'll go over this later. You guys don't have to remember any of that, totally fine. So another thing you'll need besides the paper and the watercolor pencils are your brushes. So I have various sizes. So this big one right here, this is definitely for the background. And we're gonna work on the background later, but really we're only gonna touch on the background. We're really not gonna do too much with the background. Um, I'll basically show you how I did it. Um, and if we have time to go a little bit further, we will. Um, I have various smaller brushes here. So this one will probably get me through a good portion of the wings, spreading the colors through the wings. I have a various amounts of tiny brushes for getting into small spaces like that. Um, I don't, I can't really tell you exactly which ones to use. A lot of it is based off of what you have, um, but also what you're comfortable with as well. So it's again, really up to you. Just as long as they're a little bit smaller, pointy brushes are also gonna be your best friends too. Um, if you're using anything water-based, you're going to want some water. So have a cup near you with a little bit of water in it. Have a napkin. Um, do as I say, or yeah, do as I say, not as I do. I don't always have napkins with me. Um, but if you're messy, like I can be, get a napkin. Um, other than that, I believe that's it. Oh, pencil and eraser. Um, yes, please get a pencil and eraser because we are going to actually spend a, a, a good chunk of time drawing out our butterfly too. You're welcome to do more than one butterfly. I don't want to limit you. I definitely don't want to limit your creativity. If you want to do one big one, you're more than welcome to. Um, personally, I don't like to create anything um, that's symmetrical. I like to make it skewed. That's just me. If you want to make a butterfly where you can just see the wings um, open up right there in front of you, then you do that. But I'll probably make one or two butterflies just kind of floating off, you know, diagonally. Um, but what else is there? We definitely want that eraser. So I, I typically like to use an eraser that is separate for the bigger things, like erasing bigger things, like in case I need to erase the entire wing. Um, but it's all up to preference or, or just what you have. Any questions so far? Don't at me. Okay. <laughs> um, so I know when I showed you guys the pictures, I was making a bunch of um, hand movements without realizing you guys didn't really, couldn't really see me. <laughs> so I wanna show you guys this picture again. A lot of butterfly, well, really all butterfly wings are gonna be a little bit different depending on the species. And in this case, depending on your preference. So with this butterfly, you can see that the wings are very angled. They, they almost stand straight up in the middle here before they start to bend outward. So there's those kinds of wings. Then there's the polar opposite where they really, they really stretch outward and downward. And then this one, this guy's somewhere in the middle. Um, some wings, the, you can actually see the, the, this bottom portion right here. You can see it up top, like in front of this wing right here, you can see, see it up top. Um, but in some butterfly species, they, they sort of hide behind the larger wings, but kind of like down here. So just kind of think of what you want or what your particular butterfly um, uh, has in its species. Um, some butterflies even have these little little dangly things on the side. And I wish I knew my butterfly anatomy. I definitely should have uh, researched it. But some of them do have these little parts that sort of stick out on the bottom here. 
um, all butterflies are going to have a head, an abdomen, or no, a thorax and an abdomen. So three parts for the middle. So that's actually what we're gonna be starting with. So without further ado, let's get started. So your butterfly can be large and take over the entire page if that's what you want. Um, you can sort of get an idea for how much space you're gonna take with your hands, um, or you can make them smaller and sort of squeeze in as many as you possibly can like this one right here. So in order to do the middle portion, I'm gonna grab my pencil and let's say I want my butterfly to be pointing that way. I still want it to be big because I would like to have plenty of space in, to, to draw things. So I really don't wanna make, thing, make these uh, butterflies tiny. Um, you may end up erasing a little bit and that's okay. I'll start by drawing the head. And my initial drawing is gonna be tiny. Um, the, the body that we're gonna draw, it's gonna be tiny because we want plenty of space for the wings out here. There's the head, just a very simple circle. The middle portion, which I think is a thorax, it's almost like an upside down triangle or it's vaguely triangle shaped, I would say. Again, upside down. So it's got some pretty broad shoulders that you can imagine these as your butterfly shoulders off to the side. And then down here, I'm gonna start my little body. It's gonna be elongated. It's gonna come down. Now, I can technically turn it around this way as well. I feel like for my sake, it's probably a little easier to draw it this way right now. Just sort of start to think about, um, as you're drawing, start to think about what colors you might want. Now, as far as suggestions for colors, um, it could be something as simple as what you're feeling right now in this moment. Do you feel blue? Do you feel purple? Do you feel green? Um, or it can be more along um, an awareness color. Perhaps um, a ribbon, you know, maybe pink ribbon, perhaps purple ribbon, uh, orange ribbon for MS, something like that. Totally up to you. Now, for me, I feel like I'm going to have to widen this guy's shoulders just a little bit, just to make it a little more even. Now, he looks very simple, right? I'm going to draw some little eyes. And these eyes are going to be. They're going to come like that, like in the middle here. I'm going to widen them. I'm going to go outside of the circle. If that makes any sense. That's how you draw little eyeballs. Buggy eyeballs. We will draw the antennas later. So don't worry about the antennas just yet. I just don't want them to get in the way of anything else, like the background. Any questions so far? I'm having trouble. I can't remember what the what the what the butterfly is going to look like. Like, do you have that other picture so that you can see? Yeah. Like, what else is going to happen? Where are those wings going to be? How much? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let me let me put it up again. Okay, it's loading. Okay, so you just did the middle part. Yes, exactly. So I just did the middle. And if, as you can see, some of these bodies are a little bit different depending on the butterfly. But for the most part, the, the section, like the head, the abdomen, the thorax, um, those will all be the same. As in, they're there, they exist in that, that order. There's the monarch right there. So I hope that helps. 
I guess you call, so this kind of uh, wing right here, that bottom wing there, I guess you call that a swallow tail. Giant swallow tail, yellow swallow tail. I'll probably show this picture again too. Um, once we go on to, to colors. So there we go, stop that share. Okay, so decide what kinds of wings you're gonna wanna have. And they may change quite honestly, because for me, sometimes I get frustrated drawing. And so I just kind of give in to whatever wings I was able to draw. So let me bring this picture back. So we hear, we see here the droopy wings, the uh, more angled wings, upward angle, and the, I don't know, somewhere in between. So I'm gonna try to go for this guy right here. That's what I wanna do. I want more of the angled wings right now. So I am gonna start at the shoulder and the shoulder in this middle section here, this is where your wings are going to start and end. They start and end in this area. So I have very much a high angle on my wings. So I'm going to take my time and I will probably erase a few times. It'll probably happen. But the key to getting this as symmetrical as possible is to constantly look from this side to this side, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I want to try to make it as, as symmetrical as possible. So once you have those top wings up here, bring it down a little bit, there we go. So once you have the this top portion right here, then you're not gonna worry about the sides just yet. We're going to jump down to the bottom part. So the bottom of the top wings. So I'm going to jump down back to the, uh, the middle portion here. And I'm going to make these lines go out. And I'm just going to look back and forth, eyeball it. Does it look like it's roughly the same angle? Does it look like it's roughly the same length? Now, if it's the same angle, then you'll have the same space in like in this little spot in here. You'll also have the same general space uh, within this area too. None of this is gonna be precise. I want you guys to know that. None of this is gonna be precise. And Hannah, uh -huh. so you, so you want it to go off the page, right? Yes, yeah, like with that's your wings. for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And actually, it's funny that you, you should point that out because I never, ever intend for it to go off the page. It just happens. Um, okay. <laughs> so I'm running with it. Okay. Okay. So, um, all right. So once you look back and forth and see if it's relatively... Um, uh, the same uh, distance, then you can start to close the gap. You can start to make this line on the side. I've always thought that this portion of the wings looks like a set of lungs. Well, that's just me. It's just oh. lungs. I, I thought they were ears. Them. Yeah, lungs, ears, or um, what are the those those the uh, marine animals that live on like inside sand on the beach? They look like that when they're when their shells open up. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. So and they're so, and they're so fast. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, they they burrow in the the bottom. I love them. Yeah. So figure out what kind of bottom wings do you want? Um, and I can actually 
pull up the picture again, actually, that might be helpful. That way you guys can take a look at the types of bottoms, bottom wings you can, you can have. Let me share my screen again. There we go. Now, some of these guys, those bottom wings are um, uh, very, what's the word? Um, they're, they're not straight across, you know, they're, they're very ridged. Others are the opposite. They're a little bit more put together, like these guys right here. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Silly me, I'm moving the wrong screen because I have two screens and I'm moving the wrong screen. Silly me. Okay. This one's more of a ridged bottom. See that? Plenty of circles as well. Whereas if you go on here on or across on this side, these are a bit more classically butterfly. I feel like I drew, I probably drew this butterfly um, in elementary school or middle school. So here's a close up of this one right here. So you can take a look at those wings again. One more. That green moss peacock butterfly is so pretty. And Hannah, so, I put that in the chat, the picture of the butterfly. So if you need to have it up, you can just click the link and you'll see the same image Hannah's been putting up. Perfect. You're the best. Awesome. So I will go ahead and anytime I try to draw those bottom wings, I always go over this line. I overlap it. And then later on, that's when I try to figure out um, which of these, which of the these two lines I want to um, erase? I think I really like that point at the end there. So I've drawn this entire one right here. Um, for some butterflies, I believe this end right here, I think it actually ends a little further up. There we go. So you can always fix it. You can always erase it and have this line reach all the way back up to the thorax. You definitely don't need to get it on the first try. Keep erasing as long as you need to erase it. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to match it. See how that goes. There you go, not too bad. Not too shabby. Once you have those bottom wings, um, that's when you can decide which of them to overlap. So this bottom wing right here, this is underneath the top wing. But this one, you can kind of see them both. It's kind of like it's transparent. Let's see, this one, if you go back to the original picture, um, the bottom wings are overlapping the top wings. See that? You can definitely see that. So maybe I want the bottom wings to overlap the top wings. I'm just going to erase it. Now, in case you blinked and you missed all of that, I'm going to just sort of talk through my thought process as I create a whole nother, a whole nother butterfly. Now that doesn't mean that you have to draw two butterflies, okay? I want you to um, work on yours and I'll just quickly go through another one just in case you need to see that whole process again. So I'll start with the middle. So there's the head. There is the thorax. So it's going to come out and I'm going to give it some shoulders. I'll probably erase some of these lines, clean it up a little bit. 
Are there any questions though before I keep going further? Okay, cool. So that was the middle portion. It's kind of like an upside down triangle. Now from there, I'm gonna have it come down, stretch down. Now this one, its wings are still gonna go off the page, but I feel like I have plenty of space to work with. So perhaps I want to create these wings a little bit closer to this guy right here. A little bit more drooping downwards. So when I do the wings, I'm gonna start in the middle. Drooping downward, because that's what I wanted. So it's not much of an angle right down, right over here. I know I have the end of the page, it's kind of in my way. So what I am going to do is I'm going to try to imagine by, by pointing my finger and imagine that it's probably ending somewhere over here. It seems almost equal distance. So the droopy wings are going to come down here. I'm going to try to get the same angle on both sides. And I am constantly looking back and forth. I'm also looking at the space in between the, uh, the body and the wing, just to see if, if it's equal on both sides. It's mostly equal, you know, not exactly the same, but I'm all right with it. I'm gonna connect those two. goes off the side. Now I have to draw the bottom wing. Um, no matter what, I'm always going to overlap the top wing here because I just feel like I can see it a lot more easily. And I'll decide later which one to, to uh, I almost said delete, to erase. Now, if I wanna draw one of those swallow tails, um, I'm going to start the process the same way, but later on, later after I'm done drawing both sides, that's when I'll add the swallowtail. I'll add it on top later. I just have to get these to be equal first, or as equal as possible. Now, this is this is the part where I do struggle, though, because I'm not always the best at making things symmetrical. My butterfly you know? is already a little disabled. It's okay. It's a little, yeah, you know, it's a little, she's it's a little wonky. Normal. It's perfectly normal not to be completely symmetrical. Perfectly it's imperfect. It's perfectly yes. Normal. Trust me, I know about normal. <laughs> I like that, Brandy, though. Perfectly imperfect. I'm just going to clean up my lines a little bit. Now, for those of you guys who are um, like me and you press down pretty hard on your lines, you can go back and just sort of lighten them up, lighten them up a little bit. We definitely want to see them, but we don't want them to be quite so harsh. So I'm just going to lighten them up a little bit. And if you have a big eraser, um, that would be super helpful for this too. The big erasers will really help you to go further, faster. So that's something you can do right now if you're waiting. So that swallowtail I mentioned, the little thing that sticks out. Um, I'm going to see if I can identify the middle of this bottom wing here, middle of the bottom wing. And I'm gonna have to arch this stretch it out and then make a little come out like that. See if I can do the same on the other side. And there we have it. And then you can erase, actually I think one's bigger than another. See if I can fix 
like that a little bit, even it out. And then erase that connecting line. And now I can go in and I can lighten up by erasing some of these lines. Any questions? If anyone is super, super proud of their drawing and would like to inspire others, you're more than welcome to show it. Share with everyone really quickly. I'll show. I like the bottom one, not the top. There we go, Colleen. Yeah, I like the bottom one, not the top. That bit, those big ones were hard. Really? But the bottom looks okay. <laughs> what? I think they're so cute, though. <laughs> Thank you. That big one is looks like a bat. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're adorable. Thank you. There we go. Okay. All right. So. Now the next part, we get to color it. Now we're going to identify how the heck do you color a butterfly? Let's figure it out. So I want to say these butterflies um, in the examples that I showed you, those butterflies have I don't know, maybe three colors tops. Um, they definitely fit into a color scheme of some sort. So um, these colors right here, they all um, you can you can see them pretty pretty. You can identify them pretty easily on the color wheel. So yellow, green. Next up is blue, and then an even darker blue. I think it's actually not quite that one, but this one. And then I think I have like a navy blue in there. Anyway, you guys get the picture. So there's actually this blue. So that's the color scheme for this one. No matter what you're doing, no matter what medium you're using, um, we're going to start off light. So I'm not going to press down uh, hard with these colors. Um, and I do want to lay them all out in front of me. So I think I'll do something a little bit different. I'm going to pick three, perhaps four colors. Um, if you need help choosing some colors, let me know. And I would love to, to help you. Let me go ahead and bring back the picture just in case. Just in case you can't pull it up on the uh, link. Here we go. So we're not really going to worry so much about uh, drawing those lines. See these lines right here in the tiger swallowtail. This one right here in the giant swallowtail. Um, those would take us quite a while. It's very patterned, right? So I'm not going to look at the patterns. We're going to color the whole thing as a unit. So we want to put a base color. So basically, a, our, our butterflies are going to look very similar to this guy right here, where we don't really see very many lines. Um, those darker colors, the blacks, anything darker than what we start off with, um, we're going to put those on there later, um, blacks in particular. So that, those are very strong, powerful colors. And they're going to be able to cover up anything underneath it. So we want to save that for later. So mine will probably end up looking a lot like this one, this common blue morpho right here, um, simply because it has a wide amount of blue. It has flecks of purple. It has a little bit of green in there, um, a little bit of uh, is it like an orange color, I think. So I'm. I'm really not gonna focus so much on the patterns 
anything with black, I'm not gonna focus on that. Now, unless yours is something like this, Common Mormon, where, you know, most of it is black. So that's really up to you, um, in which case you're, you are actually gonna focus on the pattern. So if that's you, but mine, not so much. Even this one right here, this white tree nymph, um, in order to create this one, if I liked all that pattern, I would cover the entire thing with a base coat of yellow, base coat of yellow, that's it. I mean, probably a few browns or something if you really wanna get technical, but again, it's just a base coat. Same thing with the Julia right here. Mostly red, blacks and browns on top. Any questions? Even this guy right here, this tailed J. We would not have enough time to cover, uh, to be able to do that much pattern. So, ooh, this guy right here, the Great Mormon, so pretty. All right, so if you if you were gonna do the J, would you like draw out all the little circle, the whole pattern with a pencil? Um, where is the J? Do you see that? Bottom right, the tailed oh. J that you were just showing, that green oh, and black one. Yeah, this guy right here. Even with this one, I would still color the entire thing with that green. And then oh, later okay. on, go go over it with a sharpie, and I would I would color it all in with a sharpie. That's how I would do it. Ah, but, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I hope that that helps to simplify the colors. We're gonna focus on a base coat. So, three colors, maybe a fourth color if you're really ambitious, but really not much more than that, unless you absolutely want those extra colors. So for me, I would love to have a base coat that has um, a lot of these, uh, these oranges. And then maybe I'll come in with some pink. So maybe I'll do this first and then some pink somewhere up here. And then I'll figure out uh, where to put this purple somewhere. Um, always start with your light colors first light colors. So if I were to order this, like put this in order, I'd probably put this orange as the lightest color. This pink is the next is the next step up. And then definitely this purple is the darkest. Um, I should say that if you want, um, if you really want any any prominent circles or really prominent areas, you're more than welcome to put that in right now. You can draw like a very large, I don't know, circle or anything else you feel like it. But if it's not prominent, if it's something that's kind of a small detail, you can put that in later. Yeah, so that's probably it for now. Maybe this guy, I'll just put like circle at the end there, circle here. But again, these are larger details. And they don't have to be circles, they can be hearts or something, if you want to put hearts, squares, if you want to get creative, or nothing, you don't have to put anything. So again, that black is going to go later. So no matter what, whether or not you're using color pencils, markers, uh, or sticking with the watercolor pencils, start off with the lightest of your colors. So for me, I feel like I really want this color to be in the middle. So I'm gonna to start to lightly put it in there. I'm probably not gonna press down too hard right now. That'll come later. And if it looks a little bit patchy, then that's okay. The nice thing about watercolor pencils is that we're going to blend them all in together, that water is gonna, is gonna blend it all in. So a lot of these brush strokes, we won't even see that. I'm sorry, a lot of these, um, these marks that we're making right now, we're not really gonna see that. If you happen to be using um, watercolor paints, not the watercolor pencils, but the paints, 
then you have an easier time because all you have to do is go straight on here with the, the paint, we'll, we'll paint plus water and color it in just with the base coat. Now, the thing about watercolor pencils is that the harder I press down with the, the color, the darker that color is gonna show up. So the whole reason I'm starting off light and really not pressing down hard is because I wanna be more reserved right now. I don't wanna make big decisions just yet. So pressing down with it is a big decision more permanent. So I'm going to be more reserved at the moment. Once I, once I get more colors on there, then I'll see if I can decide um, where to press down a little bit harder. And I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. Any questions so far? I always wonder if I explained it clearly, if there's silence. <laughs> Did I say it all right? <laughs> I hope so. I sure hope so. I'm, gonna, I'm finding just a few stray lines. So I'm just erasing some of that. Now, the reason I'm not worried, in case you're wondering, uh, I'm not worried too much about my pencil lines. I mean, I don't want it to be super dark, kind of like, like these guys down here. Um, but as long as it's not in the middle, it's really not going to show up that much. So if it's like, if it's on all these areas in which I know I'm going to outline it with black, then it's okay. You know, I don't have to worry about the, those pencil lines. I'm just gonna, I don't know, I'm just thinking I might put more pink down here than anything. Maybe more pink on the bottom. I just love the combination of uh, pink with orange. Now notice how um, when I'm coloring this in, my marks are radiating outward. Now that's honestly, that's, that's a habit. That's mostly a habit. Um, however, it is important if you're using um, just plain color pencils. So the color pencils, um, those aren't gonna blend together the way watercolor pencils will blend. So every mark um, will, will show up. So there will be ways to layer those colors together, um, but kind of like how I did with this one. This one was just pure color pencil. Um, try to have them radiating outward. Unless you're gonna start to layer them. Now, I'm already starting to see where I can add my, uh, my darker forms of these colors. So where, well, where I can press down with these colors. And I really didn't know that until I started to actually um, color the majority of this butterfly. So now that I'm, I'm getting a huge amount of base coat on here, it's starting to become a little bit more clear. Now I'll probably, I think I'll put some of this purple on the end here. I'm starting to realize that I think I want some, a large amount of black up at the top way up here. I'm just talking out loud about, about my own picture, but I think I want a lot of black up here. So even though I know I want a lot of black over here, I'm still gonna add a really good uh, amount of this color on top of this area. Mostly because I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm literally covering all, all or most of my bases. Now my lines right here, 
they definitely don't blend in and that's okay because I know later I know that once I put that water on top of it it will blend in this is why I'm not being super careful about it I know that the the water is going to help it to blend in and let's see I think I'll probably I'm thinking I might color these circles green. I'll do that green in a little bit. I won't do it just yet. I know that. What are the circles you said? I probably wasn't listening. Oh yeah, these guys right here. So I just decided to add some circles in the uh, in the space of my my wings. Do they have a so these like for the butterfly? Yeah. No, it's just the pattern. So I decided to add those circles here because I know that I want this particular spot to be drastically different from the rest of the color. And just to show you an example, I'm just gonna go ahead and color it in green because it's drastically different. Now, depending on your brand of watercolor pencils, you may actually be able to get away with erasing some of those uh, uh, watercolor lines. I've never tried it with this brand, but I've tried it with a different brand before and it worked. So let me see if it will do it with this one. So yeah, it's erasing. So yeah, if you feel like you wanna add a different color, test it out, see if it erases. Now I can add another speck of green right there. Again, it just varies from brand to brand. You can draw that circle right on top because it erased and it's good to go. Yay. I think I'm ready to add um more pink so this is where i can go in and press down harder with the pink now again the reason i'm pressing down harder with the pink is because i want it to appear darker so it's a darker form of pink it's going to appear very very bright whereas if i left it the the same the same way that i that i put it down uh, at first, um, it would be very, very light. And this is why I, I do these things in layers, step by step, little by little. I'll probably do the same thing with the orange too. In fact, I think I have, probably have a few different kinds of oranges. Yeah, I do have kind of a, a darker orange, so I think I can go in and maybe create a band of this darker orange. Again, I'm only putting uh, darker colors on top of my light colors. And I wouldn't have been able to do this if I'd gone in and just straight from the get-go um, had started to press down uh, harder. You guys doing okay with it? Has anyone done anything creative this week? I love asking that question. Doesn't it have to be art art related. Maybe you made something different. Maybe you composed a whole new song. That's creative. Hmm. Nobody composed the whole new song. Nobody. <laughs> I uh, wish I could play the guitar, but I just I have no patience for it. I have no patience for it. 
limited artwork for doing anything creative. Uh, Tony, let me see. I got you. It's been raining a lot here. That is gorgeous. I love, I love the white. I love the white. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Beautiful, Tony. Thank Beautiful, you. Beautiful, Tony. Thank you. Anyone else? I did. Yeah. I I've been doing this, um, it's a 365 day challenge um, to draw every day. And they give you um, images from Splash and you can do your interpretation of it. You could copy it. Um, so this is one of the ones that I did. Oh, that's pretty. And this was actually watercolor pencils. Yeah, that's wow. beautiful, wow, that's... Anna Marie. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. The detail in that, that's beautiful. Thank you. Super cool. Thank y'all both for sharing. Those are both really nice. Okay, I'll come back to the question again, just in case there's anybody who's dying to show us what we've done. Now I have two butterflies. So let me go ahead and just start on my other butterfly. I don't know if you if anybody else is the same way. Maybe I'll do red with this one. Maybe some orange. What should I do? Let's do something totally different. Why don't I do this aqua? It's a really nice aqua color. Reminds me of summer. So um, if I were to take a look at this and order this uh, lightest to darkest, it's kind of a toss up between these two, but I'm gonna go with the blue. I'll just say that the blue is gonna be the lightest. Um, but again, it's, it's confusing, but that's okay. Um, I'm thinking that this color, this aqua color might still be my splash of color. So it's not going to take up um, all of this, the space of the butterfly. So uh, knowing that, I'm going to set this guy aside and let's focus on the orange. So the orange, I can start off with the orange pretty easily. Now I'm just deciding all of this right now, but I feel like I want most of this butterfly to be red. I just feel like I'm just feeling this red. That's all. No real reason. But again, I'm going to go in there lightly with my orange. I put in um, a base coat of this orange, but I can I can already predict that this red is going to take up it's going to take over the majority of this this wing. It's such a strong color. And it's okay that I'm coloring this in patches because that water is going to smooth everything out. I'm not going to worry too much about it um, not looking very smooth. We'll all work out in the end. Maybe I'll put some of that uh, turquoise way at the top over here. And I can I can predict that this turquoise mixed with the Red is going to become more purple. It's, it's really more of a, a blue. So that will mix a little bit and that will look pretty nice. So I'm already pretty proud of this one. I've hardly done anything to it. So start over the process or start the process over again. 
when I move to the bottom wings. And again, I know that that red is going to take up most of the space. Very powerful color. I don't quite want to lose my pencil lines, though. I am going to not get super close to it. I don't want to lose that pencil line. Silly me, I didn't put a circle on this side. See if it'll erase. Let's see if this red will erase. Probably not. It's not erasing as well as the pink erased. Nope. That's okay. See, it's just going to be a little bit funky, and that's okay. And I'm really not even being um, very careful inside these little spots. And that's okay. Again, I know it's all going to blend together. Um, whenever you get the chance or whenever you're ready, it really doesn't matter when you do this step, but you can go ahead and color in the middle of your butterfly. So color in the body. Um, if you happen to have brown, I feel like coloring it in with brown and then later on, uh, Going, going over it with some black um, would give your, your, your painting uh, more depth. Um, same thing if you have a blue as well. So if you have blue, that would create a nice little layer of depth. I have a brown, so I'm gonna go ahead and use brown. I think the little eyeballs that I created, those can be colored in with black. So I'll do that later. I don't have to be very careful with my coloring. I know all that's going to blend in. And since I have several kinds of brown, why not use several kinds of brown? This is going to be a lighter brown. And you know what? I feel like I can change my mind and put a little bit of blue along there with it too. Blue and brown, in case you didn't know, they make a really, really nice shadow color. So you can kind of, I can just kind of put the blue on top of the brown. That's how you create different kinds of colors by literally layering um, two different colors on top of each other. Once, once you put the water on top of the, both those colors, it's going to blend together right there on the paper. And there we have it. That those two colors will create a very dark color, which is great. And now I feel like I just need one more color for the middle, for, well, not the middle, for my, my little circles there. Maybe I'll just do what should I do? This is yellow. Now I'm putting a fuchsia color on top of this red because I just noticed that I have the fuchsia color and I really want to use it. And I'm pressing down hard with this color so that it will show up and compete with the red. See, this is why making butterflies is so fun because you get to 
design your own creature. So when you're all done, you're going to have some lines in the in the wings, you know, like I guess yeah. they have bones or whatever they have something. Oh, yeah, like I can definitely go over how to make those lines like the I, I know what you're talking about, the, that pattern. I'm thinking that what we can do is we'll go over our butterflies with our water. We'll leave that alone, we'll let it dry, and then work on our background um, for a little bit, and then we'll go over it with um, either with our, our watercolor pencils or with a Sharpie, if you have your Sharpie, and I'll get you started on creating those patterns in, in between. So, um, I am going to look for a brush that's pointy. Um, now for you, as far as which size to choose from, um, that depends on you. It depends on your butterfly. Um, there's really no right or wrong uh, thing to choose. Hey, Hannah. Mm -hmm. So I know we were starting light and then going dark. If some of our butterflies have dark on an edge, like we should have done that as well. Like yours don't have like black or browns or mm. but like your first one did. Oh yeah. So we, if we if we look back here, so this do all those. Um that yeah. comes later. So oh, you shoot. definitely well mm. actually why don't we do that? Why don't we draw it in with the what is it? The the black watercolor pencil. That way you can get a sense of what to do. Now this is, uh, it, it's black, but you can also use um, brown or you can also use blue. I had some space to squeeze in some blue in here, so I did, um, but what we can do is start off by outlining the outside of your wing because that's definitely going to be black. We may not know exactly how far we're going in, but at least we'll get a good sense of the outside here. So again, this is with my watercolor pencil. Outlining the outside, because I know that's gonna be black. I also know that this line here is also going to be black. Now I don't wanna to put too much of it in, and this is why we're gonna do most of it later, because I don't want it to blend in too much with, uh, with my colors here. But if you really need to get a sense of what you're doing, then you can absolutely outline it. Yeah, like I'm doing the um, blue morpho and it's like all edged in black. Oh, the blue morpho. I have to bring that up to look at it. Yeah. Uh, the blue one's like the blue butterfly emoji. I think that's actually the butterfly it's based off of. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah, this guy, the blue morpho. So mm -hmm. most of this guy is, um, let me bring him up. Most of it is blue, um, actually mm -hmm. two types of blues because it's iridescent, but I would actually, hold on, let me bring this out real quick, sorry. Let's see, can you all see this? Oh, still, still loading. Just so everyone else can see the blue morpho. There we go. So this beauty right here, off to the side. Oh, I, I guess I'm actually doing the one below the second morpho, but ah. same kind of idea. 
the second yeah the common it's like all ringed in in black like um the blue clipper or or this guy right here the common blue morpho yeah yeah right there oh, okay ah yes so for this one i'm seeing um let me see i want to draw on this <laughs> i can show you I don't get to use this drawing function very often. You should, you're a teacher. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> I'm so sad I don't see it. Oh well, that's okay. But I see what you're saying. Um, and it does look like most of it is outlined in black, kind of like what we just did yeah. right now. Um, but if we were to fill that in with our, um, oh, what is it, with our, uh, our watercolor pencils, I would be afraid mm -hmm. of that black um, mixing okay. in too much with the, the blue. And this goes for, yeah. for anybody really who wants any kind of black, including myself, because I do want to outline mine with black too. Um, but I see what you're saying. Uh, when some of, some like the edges here, like on the right and well actually all all the edges really mm -hmm. um that's kind of dark right so uh -huh. i would still do the base coat exactly what we're doing now and then later on it'll probably have to be another time whenever it's completely dry you can go uh -huh. on top of it again with um either darker purple or um another like a, a what is it darker black Mm -hmm. and darken it up later after it dries okay. so you'll so essentially you'll put a second coat on it on there okay yeah so this goes for anyone else who wants to like darken up a certain spot you can always wait for it to dry and then put a second second coat of color pencil well watercolor pencil on top of it i hope that answered your question thanks yeah thank you okay, good so um, I'm going to choose a pointy brush simply because um, I feel like this pointy brush will be a will will help me to target certain spots. So honestly, probably a combination of like my smallest brush with my pointy brush. Um, I want to be able to get that layer um, of paint on top of it. And I still, when I'm doing these brush strokes, I still want to radiate outward. Now, even though I put this darker layer of, of color where, where I press down hard, um, I'm actually gonna avoid that for now. I'm gonna focus on the lighter portions. So let's see, for me, I feel like it would be easier to start off, at least for this guy, to use this brush, my, my smallest brush. And I'm gonna start on my lightest portions. It's gonna radiate outward. And I was gonna try to avoid the, uh, um, the darkest portions like this one, but actually if I'm careful enough, I can definitely go over that. I'm going with the same direction as my my what is it my initial mark. Now some of these sections and colors will still blend in a little bit, but if you really wanted to keep it separate, you definitely can. I'm taking my time with each little section. So I have this little section of this darker orange that I'm going over. I am constantly rinsing my brush. And I'm doing that because I don't want the, the colors to bunch up and run into each other too much. I'm sticking with one color one section at a time and again still 
moving with the same direction that in which I, I put them in there in the first place. You can really see that fuchsia is really coming to life. I'm loving this part. Take your time with it. Constantly rinse your brush every time you move on to a different section or a different color. So keep your water, water cup nearby. Now I, I have this little green dot right here. I'm going to just kind of avoid it for now. Um, the reason being because I know that everywhere around this little green dot is wet. So if I were to go over it with, uh, with my water, it would um, make it bleed a little bit. I mean, not saying it will, but there is a chance that it would. If you happen to accidentally ding a little bit of your darker color, um, like perhaps some of your, your browns or the, uh, the black, then that's okay. Rinse your brush and then just kind of see if you can spread it upwards a little bit. And if that doesn't help, then you can always take your little napkin, and just kind of tap it a little bit Basically, you're taking away the water. So the water is going to carry it. And you got to take away its uh, take away its ride. Any questions? Everybody's concentrating. Now, if you're still seeing some of those um, those initial marks that make it look like a color pencil, then that's great. It means that people can tell that you used watercolor pencils and you're embracing the medium. Now, I still don't know what I'm going to do for the background, but I'm really not going to sweat it. In fact, when it comes to these kinds of pictures, I really never know what to do with the background, which is why in the original picture, um, you'll see a lot of scribbles because I was just like, I'm just going to scribble this in here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to go for it. And that ended up being the result of many layers of uh, different colors on top of each other. And once I had all of the colors there, that's when I put the, the water. So I feel like this brush is helping me to make some nice straight lines here so I can drag some of that pink paint down. But I heard my cat meowing in the background, but it's probably just begging somebody to feed him. Was there going to be more detail on the body? Um, yes. So we want to put that, uh, that first layer of color on top of it. So anything that you want to put as far as a pattern, um, that will happen once we, we let it dry for a little bit. We'll probably, probably 
give it a couple minutes to dry. After we put, um, well, after we let all of these colors blend together. I know, Karen, for you, it's a little different because I know you're not using the watercolor pencils. Um, but for not like but for us, we just have to. It's not like I'm, I know you're what I'm doing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you some questions <laughs> like, wait, what are those three, two circles yeah. with the phallic thing hanging down? What's that going to be? Oh, a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had no um, idea. <laughs> like, at least for you, um, you can like play around with the background too and uh, use more of that blur tool. Basically, that blur tool is what you're going to be using instead of the, the water, of course. Yeah, but I, I, I decided to go with the watercolor thing just because, oh, yeah. I don't know, I've used it a lot. It just, yeah. it's like a crutch, so I didn't want to. You're branching out. I don't know what I'm doing, but, you know, <laughs> I get a little worried. I couldn't make the wings match. I couldn't, and I just, now I'm like, I like the colors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I still can't wait to see it though. I really can't. Well, I was like, I'm not going to show this, but now I'm like, well, I might. Okay. Well, we'll see if my stupid camera, I don't know if it's the wind oh, or my camera. Or... That's right. I yeah. I kept getting psycho and psychedelic. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's been happening all day then? Well, I was on another call earlier and that happened. Oh, okay. But I have a lot of gadgets, so I can always do something else. But this yeah. is like this is my computer. And so I feel like when I'm in front of my computer, I'm I'm tethered. And if I'm on a, a tablet, I can just move around and yeah, yeah. Be as focused. Now I don't know it, who here is also doing a second butterfly. Um, now I have a second one. Some of you guys may have just the one, um, but again, start thinking about your background colors. Um, I'm thinking that for me, I'll, pr I'll probably skip painting this guy in. I mean, maybe I'll just put a little bit, I'll put a little bit of paint there. Oh, wow. Tony's but, doing a second butterfly. <laughs> she's, probably I mean, I would, she's probably made five <laughs> butterflies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing if somebody was doing that. Um, but the the idea here is to allow your your first butterfly or main butterfly, if that's your only one, um, allow your butterfly to dry a little bit and while it's drying, we're going to be working on the background. Now the background, um, I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I don't ever know what I'm going to do for the background for these kinds of things. Um, so I'm going to scribble because that's what I do best. I scribble. Um, so I personally want to choose colors that are going to stand out um, against the the colors of my butterfly so i'll probably stop there with this guy um let's see so i have for mine i have a lot of warm colors so these are very summery colors um perhaps i'll do something different perhaps i'll do colors that are um uh opposites of these colors so that, that would be greens, blues, purples. Um, you could do browns if you wanted to do that. Ooh, I forgot to mention that if you haven't done the inside of your butterfly, go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna switch, switch brushes for that. I definitely want a tiny brush, really my tiniest brush for the inside of my butterfly. There we go. Now I'm loving this blue brown combination. Okay. 
Are you gonna give your butterfly your name? Not yet. Good question. If you would like your butterfly to go in the Ankin Art Gallery, we would love if you would like to name it, we will list your name, just like our owls. <laughs> Meaning yeah, mine. Mine didn't have a name, but it has a personality already, so. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to bring this picture back to show you guys. So with this picture, I already did have an idea in mind for this background. Um, I knew that I wanted to put down my lightest color first. Um, and that that is how it's always going to be. You're always going to want to put your lightest color down first, even for that background. So I chose uh, this yellow, um, pink, and purple. And then later on, I came back after it was dry. And I put this brown. And I think it's also black, too. I think I also put black. So I put black and brown much, much later. So I think I even waited like a whole day before I put those those two colors on. Um, so for now, I'll just do the uh, the yellow, the pink, and actually blue. I forgot there was blue there. So for this one, it is going to be a little different. Um, I want to do the opposite colors of, of my butterflies. So I'm going to choose green. Um, I guess I'll choose purple but I'm gonna it's gonna be a different purple I think I want like a bluish purple if I even have that one thing to have it in my head but another thing uh, to actually have it with me it's not exactly purple but that's okay it'll work so I'm gonna put how many colors patches. How many colors do you think for the background? I think three might be good. So I'll put them in patches. And once again, I'll, I'm not gonna press down hard. I'm gonna press down more lightly. Much like um, this background right here, I'll probably just go light in the middle. And then my next color, my next darkest color um, will go on the outside. And then my darkest color, so that first time around, it was just the blue, that'll be on the outskirts, so the outside. So my lightest color for now is the green. And I am going to give my butterflies plenty of space because this has the potential of. Um, uh, running into each other like these colors have the potential of bleeding into each other so we're going to try to minimize that contact i'm not going to get super close i'm going to be really careful whenever i put the water on i highly recommend scribbling your way in patches so now i'll just kind of put some blue out here For me, I don't really have too many empty spots. So I'll just kind of concentrate on the big spots. Still giving my butterfly plenty of space. There we go. I have a lovely forest green. I think this forest green can be on the outskirts. Is there a rhyme or reason with your um, the flow or the your brush marks? No, not really. Um, unless you count ease of use and comfort of my hand. Um, <laughs> I do. That's, that's that's literally it. <laughs> Hannah, is no. it like okay. when you're making chocolate chip cookies and you don't measure the chocolate chips, you just follow it with your heart? Is it like yeah. that? <laughs> it's exactly like that. Or like the spices. Yeah, you know, you whenever just, you're, you're cooking things. Yeah, just do it with it. your heart. Just measure it with your heart. It's all that matters. Okay. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. <laughs> totally. 
There we go. Here's a, another view of it. So you can see it a little bit better. Now um, I am, did someone have a question? Oh, so you put the antenna on after the background? Yes, after the background. Okay. Got it. Yeah, because I don't want to, I don't want to mess anything up, so. Um, all right, when you're ready, you can choose one of your larger brushes, um, but perhaps not your largest brush. Um, and I say that because we have all of these spaces in, be in between our butterfly wings, um, in which a, a, a very large brush probably wouldn't make sense for these areas. Um, I probably won't use this brush until I move out here. So maybe once I get to my, my medium color and my darkest color, then maybe I'll move on to that one. But because we're starting light, we're using our light colors and my light colors happen to be very close to my butterfly. That's why I'm not gonna use my largest brush for, for these parts. So I do want maybe a little more green right here. I just decided that literally right now, a little more green there. So I grab my water. And I'm going to start on top of my green here. And I'm going to start to paint. I'm going to get really close to my butterfly. But you'll notice that there's a nice hard line right there that I may or may not want. So if you don't want that line, so if you want to smooth things over, in other words, then take a clean brush with a little bit of water on it. And then go right on top of that line. Very carefully go or get as close as you can to your butterfly. But as long as you're, you're using clean water, it will blend together. I'm just getting as close as I can to my butterfly without touching it. Clean water will clean up the edges. Now I can kind of squish it around. Once I get away from the butterfly, then I can squish it around a little bit more, have a little more freedom with it. Now, if you're super careful, you can definitely go right up to the edge of the butterfly. Come on, Goldie. Now I probably won't, um, I probably won't go and put water on all of my background simply because I do want to show you guys how to put some of, or how to start those patterns within your butterfly. I'll probably just switch real quick to my largest brush. That way I can just do the edge way up here. using my water to really spread it and probably later on once it's really dry um i'll put more colors on top like different colors put, um i'm thinking a little bit of purple might be really good at the top here for mine yeah. um definitely a stronger version of my blue because i feel like my blue is really disappearing back here. So I feel like I want a stronger version of that blue. So I'll put more of that blue there. So Hannah, when you mm -hmm. say that, you mean like you wait for it to dry and then you go back in with your color pencils or I mean your watercolor pencils to make it dark? Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. So sure. I, I, I definitely want at least an hour or two in between those coats. Okay. So <laughs> for example, like what I was saying with the, the blue just now, um, if I had more time, if it wasn't 835, you know, if I was painting mm -hmm. it like late at night, then I would definitely go in there and I would put more of the same blue scribble on top. And okay. then it'll, 
it'll basically act like a second coating of that color. Gotcha. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what we can do if we want to put a pattern in our butterfly. So our butterfly, it's, it's, I mean, mine is, mine's mostly dry for the most part. I can do it one of two ways. So I can go in there with my watercolor pencil, um, black one or really dark blue or a dark brown or all three if I wanted to. And I could start to put my pattern in that way. Or I could go back and I could use a Sharpie so I would definitely start off with like um, like the, the thin Sharpie for sure and draw my pattern out that, that way. Um, now, actually, you could even draw that pattern out with your pencil first. And in fact, that actually might be the better thing to do. So let me do this. So let's say I want a really harsh line um, that's like actually more like this one. Say I want something like this one where it, it's a harsh line, a thick line around the edges here. So that's the one I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna start with the biggest outlines. So I know that that's wet right there. So I actually need to move this around so I don't touch the wet part. So I'm gonna use my pencil and you can go over it and start to draw that. Just like when we were actually initially drawing it, I'm still gonna look back and forth and try to make it as um, symmetrical as possible. There may be moments in which you end up making one area a little bit thicker or a little bit bigger um, in order to even it out, and that's okay. Yeah, no erasing I now. Yeah, I don't think so. Actually, my my pencil erases. Oh wow! So that's hmm. that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's nice to know. It might depend on how how wet your picture still is, though. Yeah, my pencil does erase. So that one, it's it's a a line that it's pretty thin down here, and it gradually gets thicker as it moves up the the wing. And then over here, I know it's hard to see. It's hard to imagine because I know the top of my wing should te technically be up here, but I, again, I'm looking at this side to make sure it's even. The first one is always the easiest. It's the second one that you have more trouble with. So that's outlined. I'm good with these outlines here. So I know that I want this bottom or these two bottom wings to also have lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in. Have it again. First one's the easiest. Second one, not always. But I'm constantly looking back and forth. Switch gears, move your hand around if you need to. If that's easier for you, then totally do that. I'm gonna come around. So you're going to fill this in with Sharpie or with black color, um, watercolor pencil? For me, I don't know. I guess I'll do it with the watercolor pencils. Okay. What would, what would you guys like to see? It really depends on you guys. I was going to do think, watercolor pencil. Yeah. I, think. All, I, I think. don't know. <laughs> you don't know yet. That's I, okay. You just, you just tell us what to do and we'll do it. I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like with the watercolor pencil. Because actually this way I can even squeeze in some brown in there too. Make it a little bit mm. different. So let's see, I've already done the outlines now. So let's say I want to just kind of 
do something that different with this uh, this part. Maybe I want these circles here. Maybe I want them to be a little bit different. Maybe I want them to be closer to this right here. So with that, I can put some of the, I honestly, I probably don't even need to use um, pencil for this part. I can just draw this. Um, I'm able to do this because I know that, that this black marker, or I'm sorry, not marker, this black uh, color pencil is going to override. It's going to, it's going to totally cover the green. So I know that I can definitely go over it with confidence. It's funny because this kind of uh, pattern in which I'm kind of doing this to the circle. Uh, when I did this to the original picture, this part right here, I was, it, for some reason, it looked to me like a bowl cut, like a haircut, but like a bowl cut. Um, so I just couldn't get that out of my head. Whenever I'm doing <laughs> these. <laughs> I was like suddenly taken back to um, elementary school when my mom would give me a bowl cut. Not fun days. Well, it made us stronger. <laughs> I or accidentally erased my painting. <laughs> erased it? No. It's somewhere, so it's like partially done and it looks so sad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I hit the wrong thing. Do you want to save it? I'm like, okay. And then it was like, wait, but you disappeared. It disappeared. <laughs> so now I don't know how to get it back on the canvas so I can oh, well, yeah. make it do it. You know, I haven't I haven't learned how to do this program. <laughs> I wish I could help you. I do. <laughs> okay, so once you have your really bold areas filled in you can color them in as you see fit just go right on top of any color you might have underneath it now if you're if you're like me and you're wanting to put a little bit of brown in there like within those those dark areas you can definitely sprinkle some brown or whatever color you want to and because I already, I know it's it's supposed to be a dark area. Um, I don't need to press down lightly for this area. I can just go straight in there, um, pressing down hard. But for me, I don't wanna spend too much more time on this part because I wanna show you how to do other patterns on the inside. So I'm just going to color this very, very quickly here. There, that's it. I'll clean up the lines later. So um, I want to show you some patterns. Let me go back to my lovely little examples here. OK. So a lot of butterflies have these um, really lovely lines. I'm gonna go back to this one. Those really lovely lines that sort of cut through the wing. Um, they go right on top of the wing. Um, for me, I don't have the patience to be that intricate personally, but I'm gonna show you how to break it down a little bit more easily. So. I wish I could circle this part, but this, these two um, areas in which it's more, gosh, I have to be able to circle it. Do you not have the um, annotate feature? I don't see it on my screen. Huh. Like it says apps. But it's not, it's not an app. Just describe it visually. Yeah. Oh, we can um, see your clicker. We can see, so just circle oh, it. 
Oh, you can see my clicker. That's amazing. Okay, this area right <laughs> here. So notice how all of the lines stem from this one spot. So if you're do, trying to do something like this or something similar, um, see if you can make your lines come out from the middle here and then have all of these other lines stem from that middle section. So let me show you another example. Um, I'll just show you one more example because I know, Brandy, I know you're trying to do this guy right here. So it would drive me crazy yeah. to try and do all of these lines. But I see some big areas that I can start with. So this big line right here, I can try to create a line similar to that on both wings and then have all mm -hmm. of my lines jutting out from there into my, my, my outer area out here. So some of these lines in the middle, or I'm sorry, at the top here, you may have to make some of those up, but see if you can identify main areas like this line right here. This is like a thick main area that all of your other lines can sort of branch out from. Karen called them bones. So now they're, to me, they're, they're butterfly bones. bones. What a, I mean, there had to be some, <laughs> some integrity, you know, some structure. Yeah, yeah, yep. Structure, yes, but we're going to call them structure, bones. Structure, yes, but we're going to call them bones. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was able to recover. I was able to recover my picture. Yay. Oh, good. As a drum, I was in a panic. <laughs> But I did a Google search too, and I said, "Well, I had the picture." And I said, "Tell me, what does this picture look like?" And it gave me a bunch of watercolor butterflies. So I was like, "Okay, if that's nice. what I did, at least <laughs> at least Google knows what it is." So I'm going to um, for my particular butterfly. I can already identify a starting point. I already created this kind of pattern here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to make this bone right here. It's going to mm -hmm. stretch upward. <laughs> so it's, I, I decided that it was going to go upward. It was going to branch off from this little orange section here. So to the best of my ability, I'm going to copy it on this side. And guys, I know it's getting late. So if you're almost finished with your butterfly or you want to go home, but you want to sh or not go home, but go to bed. <laughs> Hannah, that's probably my sign. I'm going to have to go to bed pretty soon. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry, go home. Um, but if you are getting ready to go to bed or you want to share your art, just shout, holler, let us know because we want to show it. And if you need anything else, like if you need Hannah to show you how to do something to finish your um, butterfly up, just let me know. Let me know. Ooh, Tony, I, I see you. There we go. Tony, that is very gorgeous. nice. Very That's very nice. nice. That's nice. Uh -huh. Look at those bones. <laughs> yep, nice bones. <laughs> Good night, Tony. Thank you. Good night, Tony. Beautiful. Is there anybody else who would like to share before we move? Colleen. Okay, there you go. Oh, oh. beautiful. I love I your background. Know. Oh, thank you. Hey, Hannah, real quick. How did you do specs on that one? That was the only thing I was wondering because I'm waiting for it to dry. I'm going to do a little bit oh, more. On this, batter. Oh, this one? Uh, yeah. Yes, I, I can copy it right here on this little Just batter. curious. Yeah, so I ended up outlining the circle first. Okay. And then I thickened up one side of it. So I chose a side and make it I made it thicker. And then I put mm. oh, little gotcha. like scribbly lines just to make it more jagged. I see. Okay. And you yeah. well, you wouldn't put water on that, would you? Um, probably not. I would try to yeah, I'd probably I'd try to keep it as is. Yeah. Okay, and then yeah. what about Hannah, the specs in the in the background that you had on that first one? Ah, literally oh, just, yeah. Um, yeah, literally just going here and then okay. creating little specs. 
and then going over it with my tiny little uh, brush, oh. one by one, literally. Wow. One by one. Okay, that's so cool. So, and then actually, you can even go over it again while it's still wet with your with another color or the same color. It doesn't matter. Hmm. That's so like cool. That. Yeah, cool. Very easy to do. So. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Awesome. Joe, I so see much. you, Joe. There we go. That's pretty, Joe. Oh, Ooh, wow. That's love. beautiful. Nice. The textures. Uh-huh. Loving your background. The background is just gorgeous. I'm you really loving it. That looks like it should be on a card. I know. I Where's love it. it. Oh, it is a car. It is a car. It is a car. Oh, oh, no, it's perfect. I'm yours. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Oh, I love oh that's so, so beautiful. That red, that red along with the, uh, the greens, gorgeous. That's a beautiful choice. Cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your sharing. Yay, Sharon. Okay. Yeah, Sharon. Sharon, that's so beautiful. Like the I'm loving like your your second moth with the on the bottom yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so the colorful. Like oh, purple body. Oh, I like it. Hope in me. Uh-huh. Thanks. That was fun. Yes. Thank you, Sharon. Okay. Have a good night. Yes. You too. Oh my gosh, oh. Susie, your butterflies have such personality. You oh. did the hearts too. <laughs> they're so cheerful. I know. They're so happy. Happy they're little guys. So happy. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the time to remind everyone to do that yeah. survey. Like, how do you feel now? Yeah. Happy, happy oh, I'm happy after yeah. viewing Susie's butterflies. <laughs> Very good. And the, the head is like Susie a smiley face. face. It yeah. is. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. such a good job, Susie. Oh, thank you. Yay. Very cute. Thank Instead you. And then happy little trees. I have happy little butterflies. <laughs> Aww. I have Randy. a I have a Pokemon. It it's supposed oh to be one gosh. of the bird. Uh, it's Pokemon apparently, Pikachu. but it's one of the ones that, that you. Pikachu. Yeah. Pikachu. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So when we do the bones, I guess now I can't go over that anymore else than the bones just melt. Um, right. You can. Oh, no, you definitely can. Yeah. Um, oh, definitely awesome. wait for it to dry. So wait for it to dry. So you're you're I'm assuming you you went over it with the watercolor pencil. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can definitely go over it if you wanted to um, or you could leave it as is. If you were to go over it, use a, a tiny, tiny brush like that. Okay. Same for like the antenna when you put those on, be very careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same okay. for the antenna, it's the same process. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Great job, You're welcome. Brandy, you did fantastic. It's gorgeous, Brandy. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, Is there anybody it. else who wants to share? Barbara, you wanna Barbara? share, you saying bye. Oh, no, I can't share. Okay. So my daughter bought me watercolor pencils like ages ago and they've just sat in the drawer. And so I had a lot of fun just like kind oh of, oh, sorry, oh, that's my cat. <laughs> I had a lot of fun just playing around with them. So I was really You did wow. phenomenal. Yeah. Those just look like out of a book. Yeah. Seriously, Good. just I love the the detail you put in them. They're gorgeous. Yeah, Absolutely it of, fantastic. It was a lot of fun watching the yeah. like as soon, and I I think I've used them before, but like colored pencils. <laughs> I was afraid to put uh -huh. water on top, so now I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> well, <good>. Yay! <laughs> hey, thanks yeah, for sharing, Barbara. I love yes, the edges. Thank you. I love oh, the edges on the pink one. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. And I, I want to apologize because I was having like, I'm having a day. <laughs> and so I was having some tech difficulties. 
um, getting logged on. So no, um, you're good. You're so, so good. So Hannah and Alexa, and then my email locked me out. So, um, so if you get like a thousand emails for me tonight, I apologize. No, <laughs> no you're good, Barbara. We're just glad okay. you're here. <laughs> that is okay. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks. I could show mine. Okay. Yeah, Anna Marie. Anna Marie. Anna I Antonia. started out too small, so I made a lot of them. Oh my god! I love the layering. That yeah. is exactly what you do. That's, oh, that's beautiful. Wonderful. I so know. lively. Thank mm -hmm. you. A lot going on, but I love yeah, that I, I love can it. still see the different sections. Like I, I see. Uh, the detail you put within the the colors, you know, in the in the wings. Thanks. I, I want to work on it more. I think. Yeah, definitely. Great but job, class. It was good. Thank you. Perfect. Have yeah, a great please, night. Good night. I think I'll send another email in a minute <laughs> for the the questionnaire. I can. Uh... <laughs> I can show mine, but I want to get a picture of you. Yeah. Oh, no. Now you put me on there. I'll oh, get, okay. Let me get, get the art cam back on. I won't remember. Um, I want to do the snipping tool. And then oh, I'll have it. Good night. Oh, good night, okay. Susie. Night, Susie. Night. Bye. But we, but we have to put the antenna on it. Yes. Let's, uh, let me show you how to put the antenna. Very easy. Um, do it with a sharpie or the same thing you've been using the watercolor pencil um use a black one i don't know where my oh here it is um so it comes out of the middle of the head here and all you're going to do is make it go out like that very simple and and just to be clear this would be after you're finished with the background so note that i haven't finished my background um you would definitely finish your background back here um, and then you can sort of curve them at the top there. And then just like what I was saying with uh, to, to Brandy, you can leave them as is and not do anything, or you can take your teeniest, tiniest brush and very carefully and lightly go right on top of them. It'll make a difference, but it's not a huge difference. So you could leave it as is. I hope that clarifies. Yeah. yeah it looks good. good. Perfect. Good. Are you ready, Karen? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just it looks let me turn on the video because it seems to only show me for a minute. Ah. And then it gets psychedelic. This still needs a lot of help. There we go. Oh, like that's poop. beautiful. I know. It looks like the poop emoji. It's like he's not going anywhere. <laughs> it <laughs> looks like I don't think it's peacock inspired. Like to me, that looks like a butter. If you combined a butterfly and a peacock. Uh -huh. okay. yeah, I, yeah, I didn't intend to yeah, do that. Yeah, I agree. I, I liked your circle. <laughs> I could decide if I wanted um, turquoise or purple. And I went, well, we could have both. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really love the the lighter color that you did on the outside, which is like the opposite of what I did. Actually, I have like the darker black on the outside, but you actually put the the turquoise on the outside of the circle, and I love that. I really feel like that's my oh, like favorite that. aspect of this. I well, I gotta put bones or texture or something on that. On that, <laughs> I mean, I freaked out when I lost when I lost it because I tried all this different orange, and you know, I tried the crayon, the marker. Mm. I blurred it, then I unblurred it, then I did so all uh -huh. that is like I don't know if I can make the body any smaller. It's just kind of weird, but it doesn't really matter. It's just my um wait, because I'll show you when I lost it. Um I went to Google Images. I was trying to figure out like, well, now what do I do? Karen, to me, it looks like the butterfly has a big heart. That's what it looks like. Like oh, it has a lot of personality. So when I lost it, I went to Google you know, Google images. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Those. And I'm like, well, it fits in with those guys. Yes. Yeah. So I felt yeah. proud. I was like, well, maybe I can't get it any better. Cause I really blurred up the head and couldn't figure out. No. I, like, oh, I lost it. No, it looks <laughs> great, Karen. Great yeah. job. 
It really does. Your colors, as always, are beautiful. Well, you know, I, I do steal them from the palette. I change them, too, sometimes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So but, Hannah, is well, there anything else you uh -huh. need to show us? Um, I know we have a couple people on and don't feel like mm -hmm. at all you need to share your art, but if you do, just let me know. Um, is there anything you need to show us before we say goodnight? No, I mean, unless you see something I'm missing, that's it. I touched on everything. Yeah, we, if we anyone antenna, so. who's still here is like, hey, I want something on my butterfly, just be like, well, yeah, yeah. help. I want to understand how you did all that texture. You're doing it now. How are you doing that texture, the different colors and the texture? Did, you mean, so this part no, right no, here that I'm doing? Right in front of it, like towards the end, you have the orange and the yellow and the pink. Oh, um, like, the orange and the yellow. Uh, like, I mean, you're going back over it after it dried. You know, I wasn't really paying attention. I was like with that, you're just um, going back over that with more pencil. Um, like, well, that was actually the the background that we were talking about when we were talking about layering it with more color. Um, for me, I feel like I'm finished coloring the inside of this um, simply because I, I would rather work on the actual pattern instead. So um, that texture that you see that was created in the, in the beginning. So whenever I, I put the water on top of it. So I'm going to leave it like that because I don't really want it to change. Was that was that kind of the question you were asking? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the other is, so you're saying the texture is now, what exactly is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, the texture. Now, now, now you're saying you want to do, you're doing something that you want to do. The the skeleton or the bones. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather yeah, put the bones on top. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like I'd rather put the bones on top of it, so. So um, you're just adding just, that. Mm -hmm. Literally right on top, like this. Okay, I'm going to do a screenshot. Yeah, I'll it's coming. Screenshot. And then I'll go, wow, I did a great job. Oh, that was high. <laughs> 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 Let's see, and I'll just kind of do it like that. So, no rhyme or reason, just a little at a time. And that's it. Try to make it even on that side, but I'm not going to sweat it if it's not even. See if I can replicate. I that. had such a hard time getting the body. I, I didn't realize how kind of dyslexic, for lack of a better word, I felt. You know, just I can't. Oh, just trying to make it uh, symmetrical, you mean? Yeah. I mean, it was like, it wasn't even a close. <laughs> I just went, okay, <laughs> you're just not going to be a. Well, that is tough. Butterfly. And you, the the picture you showed me of your butterfly, I thought it was great. So I think you're, so don't be hard on yourself. a lot of time. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you, you did great. So Hannah, I think we are going to call it a night. Of course, people can email you at Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, -N -N -A at ancan, A-N-C-A-N, dot O-R-G. If you have any questions, need something clarified, need some help, anything like that, feel free to email Hannah. And you're also, feel free to email me your pictures so it can go in the ANCAN Art Gallery, Alexa, A-L-E-X-A, at ancan.org. And Hannah, wonderful class. I loved all of them. And especially what I loved is you giving us the space to choose whatever we felt with, with different colors. And I think that's awesome. So good yeah. night, everybody. Thank you for coming. And we will see you next time. Thank good you. night, guys. I saw Bye. the gallery. It looks great. Yay.